Today's video are the five mistakes I made as a guinea pig owner. When you first start out owning guinea pigs, you're bound to make a bunch of mistakes. I did too, so here are my five biggest guinea pig mistakes and hopefully you can learn from this. Tiny cage. I started off with the smallest guinea pig cage. I got my first guinea pig in the late 90s and I was around five at the time and this unfortunately was the standard cage. When I got my second herd in 2014, I started off with a cage I thought was big because it looked really bulky, but which really wasn't this big from the inside. It definitely didn't have enough space. My two guinea pigs, Pebbles and Frida, were only a few weeks old, so they were still really tiny, but it quickly became apparent that the cage was too small, especially when we adopted Sylvester, and the cage in general was just very impractical. This is a video of the cage we had in case you're planning on buying this. It's too small, but also it's super impractical because all of the bedding will end up everywhere if you're cleaning this cage. Even if you go for fleece, it's really difficult to clean this cage without turning your whole living room into one big pixie. When we built our first DIY cage, we again thought that this was a really big cage and compared to the other one, it was. But as Pebbles, Frida and Little One grew bigger than baby pigs, we realized that the cage was not big enough for them to run around when I wasn't at home. So we built another cage. We again thought, you might be able to spot a common theme here, but we again thought that this was a really big cage. At one point we decided we wanted to get a fifth guinea pig and it became super obvious that no, this cage wasn't big enough for five guinea pigs. But also I realized I really wanted my guinea pigs to be able to run around in a straight line, so we needed a cage that was just way longer than the cage we had. I think I could have saved myself a lot of trouble, time and money if I had just gotten a bigger cage in the beginning. Number two, not thinking things through. I adopted Pebbles and Frida from someone who said they rescued guinea pigs, but who, looking back now, probably didn't have a clue. I didn't think about the fact that female guinea pigs from not well-known backgrounds very often come to their owners pregnant. So when Pebbles got bigger, I simply assumed she was growing, like, you know, baby guinea pigs do. I had also never seen a pregnant guinea pig before, and since Pebbles only gave birth to one baby, her belly also wasn't extremely big, though looking back at footage now when you know what happened, you kind of see that she's pregnant, but at the time didn't cross my mind at all, so I didn't realize that this was something that could happen and thinking about this kind of stuff would have been helpful. Everything worked out fine, little one was healthy, but something could have also gone wrong because I had no idea what to look out for. And also, we introduced Sylvester to the herd and you should never do an introduction when a guinea pig is pregnant as it causes a lot of stress. So Sylvester is the nicest guinea pig in the entire world, so I honestly think he knew that Pebbles was pregnant because he really kept sniffing her behind and Pebbles was fine with this um, because you know usually they pee on each other when someone sniffs their behind. Pebbles didn't do that, Sylvester sniffed a lot so I think Sylvester actually knew that Pebbles was pregnant before we did. Sylvester is the nicest guinea pig on earth so he just wasn't interested in a proper introduction. He was just like I'm going to live here and everything's fine and I'm not going to do the whole dominance thing. And that was really nice of Sylvester and it didn't cause a lot of stress for Pebbles, but introductions usually cause a lot of stress for a pregnant guinea pig, so you should never do them. The only reason why it wasn't stressful and why things worked out well is because Sylvester is the perfect guinea pig. It wasn't really because I was the perfect owner. Number three, be talked over by a pet shop employee. I bought some of the guinea pigs Heidi's at a pet store when Pebbles and Frida were only a few days old and the pet shop employee really leaned into me that I needed to give them pellets and that baby guinea pigs absolutely depend on pellets. This wasn't what I had researched and it also didn't fit to what my vet had told me but I got insecure because in that moment I just was really overwhelmed with the situation. I gave in and I bought ridiculously overpriced pellets that I didn't end up using. buying small Heidi's. I bought really small willow bridges and a really awesome cork tunnel at first because Pebbles and Frida were tiny and they seemed lost even in these Heidi's. 
A few weeks later though, I had to buy everything new and when it comes to the Willow Bridges, even go up three sizes. So I could have saved myself a lot of money if I had taken into account that my guinea pigs were going to grow. Read about other owners' experiences. I feel like a lot of my mistakes could have been avoided if I had done more research into other owners' experiences. While I did do a lot of research before getting my guinea pigs, I think it would have been better to either do even more or perhaps to read more on guinea pig forums where actual owners discuss their experience. I was woefully unprepared for the amount of illnesses which hit my herd in 2018. I also wanted to show you what Frida has to take every morning. So she gets this stuff, which is just basically something that makes her regain her appetite. We also feed her a little bit of critical care just in case she isn't eating enough. And then in the evening, that's the antibiotic and she gets a painkiller, which is that one that wants for cats. I knew about illnesses and symptoms to look out for, but I'd never thought about the fact that it could A, hit most of my herd at once, especially since all of these illnesses were unrelated, B, that it could hit my herd at such a young age, and C, that it would result in so much stress and work. My fiance helped me out with syringe feeding, cleaning and driving to vet visits. And honestly, it would have been extremely difficult to keep this up alone and still show up to work at least semi-regularly. Also, I did not think about the emotional toll it would take on everyone. When I now browse on guinea pig forums, I see many reports about this exact thing. That somehow when no one is sick, no one gets sick, but as soon as one guinea pig is getting sick, all the other ones develop completely unrelated illnesses. So definitely reading up on other owners experiences regarding any topic is a really good idea and it is a mistake I made which hopefully everyone else can avoid. These were the five mistakes I made as a guinea pig owner. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time! Bye!